Hello, Mrs. Flores. Hello, doctor. How are you? So, I've scheduled this meeting for us today to discuss the results of your breast biopsy, but I've actually given my pager and my cell phone, num cell phone to my nurse practitioner so that we don't get interrupted. Okay. Um, are you alone or did you come with someone? No, my children had to work today, so I'm by myself. Okay. So, how are you doing? Uh, I still get tired and I get dizzy if I get too tired. I've got some knee problems and uh, yesterday I had some nausea. Uh, better today. Uh, I think it's probably mostly because of the uh, blood count, the anemia. Okay. So I think I'm okay. How about any anxiety or depression? Well, I'm really worried about the test. I, uh, I have a lump, so I'm afraid. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know about that test they did with the needle. Have these symptoms affected your life in general, your ability to complete your housework? Well, I've cut back my uh, volunteering at the nursing home, but I still babysit my grandchildren. Okay, so my clinic and I can help you with all those symptoms. You know, we'll go over that, you know, at the end of this meeting and in the next couple of weeks. Uh, before we res go over the results of the breast biopsy, I would like to ask you one more question. How do you handle medical knowledge? Uh, would you like all the details of your treatment? In my family, my mother would defer to her children, especially me. Um, how do you handle medical knowledge? Oh, you'll have to tell me. I, I want to know everything. Okay, all right. So, Mrs. Flores, I'm afraid uh, I don't have very good news for you today. The breast biopsy revealed that you have an invasive form of breast cancer. I'm sorry. I wish I had better news for you. How can I have breast cancer? I make all my checkups. I have all my mammograms. I don't understand. Well, unfortunately, despite routine checkups, um, cancer can occur in anyone. How long have I had it? It's very hard to tell, but you probably have had this for several months. No one in my family has ever had cancer, except my husband. Could I have caught it from him? No, cancer's not like a cold. Um, you know, it's uncertain why some people get cancer and others don't. Tell me about your husband. He died of colon cancer. I nursed him. He, Sorry to hear that. So, I've seen how cancer can eat you up. It's ugly. I know this comes as a shock to you. I don't want to be in pain like he was. You know, my clinic and I, uh, we're going to support you through this. And we're going to guarantee that you, we address your pain and all the symptoms that you're having. We're also going to be available for your family, okay? I'm glad you told me how you're feeling because now I know where you're coming from. Um, the next step is for you to be meeting with a medical oncologist. This is the cancer doctor and the general surgeon. Uh, most likely they'll recommend the following. Uh, either to remove part or your entire breast. Uh, the goal of this surgery is to remove the cancer. This is going to be followed by radiation therapy and chemotherapy, and the goal is to make sure that we kill any remaining cancer cells that could be present after the surgery. I think we should focus on keeping you comfortable. Am I going to lose my hair? Oh. Am I going to have to wear a diaper? My children are going to have to take care of me. Yeah. Am I going to die, doctor? No, you still have many options available. In fact, I hope the best for you, okay? I don't want to be in pain like my husband was. You know, my clinic and I are going to help with any symptoms you may have, including pain. You know, I can help you with all these things. These are all issues that will arise 
Uh, in fact, I'm a part of a team. Uh, in my team is a social worker. A social worker is available to you if you have any financial questions or issues. They're also, also available to you and your family. In the event that you can no longer take care of yourself, they can provide services. And I have a great nurse specialist. She is very skilled in pain management and control of all your symptoms. She's also available for refills. And lastly, my chaplain, uh, he's, he can provide prayer or just basic counseling for you. Are you interested in any of these services? Uh, I don't know, not now. Okay. Here's a tissue. You know, I can't imagine how you're feeling, but we're here to support you and we want to provide you with the best medical care for you. We will support you in any way that we can, no matter what happens. Let's plan to meet February 1st. It's on a Tuesday at 9 a.m. So in the next couple of weeks, can you write down any questions that you may have for myself, the medical oncology team? Can you tell me in your own words what I have just said? I have breast cancer. You're going to make an appointment for me with the cancer doctor to talk about treatment. But I'm going to get better. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what it's going to do to me. I wish the best for you. You still have many options available, and we hope that we can cure this, okay? And what I understand is that you want to remain as independent as possible. You don't want to be a burden to your family. I can help you with all that. Here is my contact information for you. It has my number and the numbers of all of the people that I just talked to you about. And I have written down the date also of that meeting. Okay, would you like for me to explain any of this to your family? Yeah, uh, okay. I, I, I'll, I'll bring my daughter. Okay. okay. All, right. All right, again, I'm hoping the best for you and no matter what happens, we're here for you, okay? Okay. All right. Let's talk about your pain. Okay. All right. Tell me when it did start or...